A small region in Somalia heads to the polls and the result could have huge consequences for the Horn of Africa. Kenya, Ethiopia and Somalia itself are jostling for influence over Jubaland. So why is it so important and what's at stake? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Hashim Ahalbara. A small region in Somalia is at the center of a growing power struggle in East Africa. The people of the autonomous federal state of Jubaland will choose their president on Thursday. Somalia's neighbors are watching closely. Jubaland's main city is Kismayo, a target of attacks by the armed group Al Shabaab. 26 people died in a hotel assault last month. Jubaland borders Kenya, which has soldiers there as part of the African Union's mission against Al Shabaab. Somalia's central government wants more control over the region and warns it will not recognize the election winner. Let's have a look at Jubaland. The autonomous region in southern Somalia was announced in 2010 and formalized the following year. The territory consists of the Gado, Lower Juba and Middle Juba provinces. The largest city is Kismayo. Al Shabaab controlled Kismayo until it was driven out in 2012, but the armed group is still active in many areas. Jubaland's president, Madobe, was first elected in 2013 by clans, elders, and politicians. Madobe is a key ally of Kenya, while the federal government in Mogadishu is getting closer to Ethiopia. Let's bring in our guests here in the studio. Afiare Almi, Professor of International Relations at the Qatar University. In Nairobi, via Skype, Matt Bryden, Chairman of the Sahan Research Institute and former coordinator for the UN Monitoring Group on Somalia and Eritrea. And in London, Jamal Osman, an award-winning Somali journalist. Welcome to the program. Afiare, this is an election in a region in Somalia. But yet, it has become a hot topic. Why is that? Well, I think let, let's start in, within the context mm -hmm. so, so that at least we understand what's going on. There is a legal ambiguity within the Somali constitution, and therefore this debate is more or less about the essence of the Somali state, uh, what, 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 what it will be. Is it federal, confederal, unitary state? This debate is now being played in Kismayo now. That's one level. The other level is there is mistrust between the regional leaders and the national leaders, so-called the, the, the Mogadishu. And this is largely based on the power struggle, which has been going on for quite some time. This, again, manifested itself in, in numerous ways, not only in Jubaland, but also in other parts. And many believe the Somali uh, government in Mogadishu is trying to impose central system in the country, particularly taking note of what happened in Paidoa and other, uh, maybe Johar in, and, and also in, in Galmud. These are the, uh, I mean, the backgrounds. And the final thing perhaps, and the final main point is that the regional countries, particularly the neighboring countries, have also their own interests and playing their proxies. In we the will talk about the regional implications. Matt, each time you're having elections in any part of Somalia, then you have a great deal of anxiety about what's happening, the key players, and what could happen next. Is it bringing about the need to see the whole political system in Somalia? I think that's, that's a key question. And uh, I agree with, with Professor Elmi that this is really this issue in Kismayo is about the essence of the Somali state. Um, but in certain areas, there's more ambiguity than in others. Um, in the case of state elections, uh, the constitution assigns the responsibility for the establishment of, of state or provincial uh, executives and legislatures to the states themselves. It doesn't award the federal government any role and so what is really creating the tension uh, around the Kismayo election and the, the, the other processes that Professor Elmi referred to um, is that the federal government is trying to impose itself um, and is 
arrogating to itself powers over the way elections take place in different parts of the country um, that it doesn't actually have. Um, then building on that, um, as Professor Ilmi said, uh, regional powers are aligning themselves behind either the federal or the state mm -hmm. governments. And so this issue is taking on proportions that go far beyond a normal uh, Somali state-level electoral process. Jamal, one of the reasons why the government in Mogadishu seems to be pretty much concerned about the elections uh, in Jubaland is the fact that it could further pave the way for Jubaland to break away from the centralized government, which which seems to be a genuine concern by the government. Uh, yes, I would agree with the previous speakers, Matt and Afiara, that the Somalis are figuring out which political system they take. There's mistrust between uh, the leaders. But there is also another important issue, which is Somalis as a society. We're, we're a clan-based society. Mm -hmm. And we have been fighting each other for the past 30 years for domination. Every clan wants to dominate other clans. And I would say that the president, uh, Farmacho, is abusing the office of the president to empower his clan. And what he literally wants is to his clan to dominate Jubalan and Kismayu. And that is not something Somalis usually like to talk about. But the reality is, we can talk about policies, but Formaggio has the interest of his clan at heart, not the interest of the Somali nation. Uh, and I think that is another issue which uh, we have to uh, mm -hmm. tell our audience. Afia, you've heard what Jamal has just said, which is the the clan connections which happen to be the decisive factor in these elections. Uh, Madubi, for example, is, comes from Ogadin. Uh, Farmajo is from the Marihan. And those clan connections or affiliations are one of the reasons why Somalia disintegrated in 1991 and continues to face the same problems. Well, I have to say that uh even though clan system is a reality within the Somali context, I'm not one of the people who use clan narrative to explain every conflict. I think there are levels and at times the individual ambitions uh, override even the clan interests and this and that. Anybody who is in Mogadishu was trying to impose itself in other parts of the country. This has been happening even before this, uh, before the civil war during Mohammed Siad Barre. And also, uh, Sharif did not, I mean, Sheikh Sharif, President Sharif, and also ha President Hassan Sheikh did not agree with the way Jubalan or other places were also being established. So when you look at it, this is a debate between centralism and more or less a practice based on confederalism. And to uh, some extent, is some actually one of the regions want to secede from the rest. So I come back to the previous point where basically it's about the essence of the Somali state. It, it, do we go for a confederation where literally, uh, fed, uh, I mean, FMS is, we call it, or, or Jubalan and, and, and Buntuland and Galmudug and other regions are more or less operating as though they are independent states or so called, I mean, engaging other countries or denying the, the so-called central government mm -hmm. to come. So this is a real debate that has been going on for some time prior to Formaggio, and I think it will go on even after. We can just put the clan, I mean, uh, aspect of it. Uh, in, you you one think aspect. this is a politically it, motivated It's more issue. of a political motivation, mm -hmm. I would say. Matt, I mean, you have Madubi, who is now the front runner in the election in uh, Jubaland. There are three other uh, uh, key candidates also in uh, in the uh, in the election. However, what's quite interesting is that suddenly you're having regional players jostling for influence. The Kenyans seem to be really pro Madobi. The government in Mogadishu seems to be favouring other candidates. Why is this happening? Well, this is a really interesting um, point because Jubaland was established. Um, almost as a joint uh, initiative of Ethiopia and Kenya, working together, supporting Adobe's forces to force Al-Shabaab out of the port city of Kismayo. And until uh, a year ago or so, um, Ethiopia and Kenya saw eye to eye and uh, were close allies, uh, not only in Jubaland, but also uh, in their support to the state building process in Somalia. 
Um, but since the arrival in power uh, in Ethiopia, Prime Minister Abiyo Ahmed, um, he has reversed Ethiopia's longstanding policy of support for a more decentralized federal structure and has embraced the leadership in Mogadishu. Um, and so what has happened is that suddenly Kenya finds itself supporting uh, Madobe as it always has since the beginning, mm -hmm. or at least the electoral process that's been organized under Madobe's auspices, while Ethiopia uh, seems to have aligned itself with Mogadishu not, not even, uh, not in a subtle way, but in a way that it has also signaled that it will not recognize the outcome of the elections mm. and that Madobe must be removed by any means possible. And so this has put Ethiopia and Kenya uh, not only at odds politically, uh, but as recently as yesterday, we saw their forces in a standoff at Kismayo Airport, uh, which could easily have degenerated into violence between mm -hmm. two countries that are longstanding neighbors and allies. Jamal, you said earlier that this is the right of the people in Jubaland to pursue their political ambitions. But when you look at uh, the latest developments, the different candidates vying for bigger influence, backed by different countries, isn't this a scenario where we are most likely going to end up having proxies fighting on behalf of other regional players in Jubaland? I'm sure there will be some proxies, but I have been going back and forth to Kismayo uh, this year. And in fact, I was there last month uh, filming a documentary. And I think the Jubaland administration uh, is powerful. They have strong military. Uh, there would be challenges. They would face challenges. And, but I think they would overcome with the support of Kenya, uh, obviously. And I think we have to remind ourselves, um, Somalis, as I said, have been fighting for many years. Mm -hmm. We are desperate for peace. And Ahmed Madobe and his, gov his sort of administration have brought peace. Uh, and Kismayo has been the most peaceful city in southern and central Somalia. So you would ask yourself, why would you destroy this peace? You can solve this issue through the ballot. You can solve th this issue through negotiations. Mm -hmm. But why would the central government, led by Farmajo, is using Ethiopian soldiers to cause havoc and conflict. As Matt said yesterday, there was a standoff between the Ethiopians and the Kenyans. Mm -hmm. uh, and the co uh, conflict could erupt. Uh, but that is the question. We need peace. And Kismayo is a very peaceful city. So can I... And elections so far mm -hmm. are, are, going, are, are going according to plan. So, so why Jamal, would you destroy Just for the sake of uh, more... Yeah. We'd like just to further uh, explain this to our international audience. What's the end game here for the people in Jubaland? Do they want to take this as an opportunity to consolidate their political gains and say in the future, we would like to have an independent state of our own? I, I don't think the people in Jubaland want an independent state. I think the, the, the Madobe and others are pro-unionist. They mm. want a united Somalia, in mm. fact. But I think the, the issue is, the issue they have is with the central government led by Farmaggio. Uh, but if another leader comes uh, or, or changes hand, and he, he, I remember he had issues with the previous leader, uh, Hassan Sheikh, at the beginning. But after two years, they became very close and they were working together very closely. So I think it comes down to the relationship between the leaders and what interest each leader has and mm -hmm. what he is trying to achieve. Afiari, you've heard what uh, Jamal basically was saying, that the problem lies in the central government based in Mogadishu, which wants to just continue its uh, control over the political establishment in whole Somalia, irrespective of the ambitions of the different groups across the country. Well, that is true. Yeah, and I agree with the view that uh, the central government has been trying to project a power that it doesn't have. I mean, it's all doing these things, even though it's not strong enough to do that. Because if it can, then, I mean, th I mean everything uh, could have been settled by force, but they cannot do it. Therefore, the only other option for any government in Mogadishu is to negotiate its way. These are the only two ways. Either you negotiate or you, uh, uh, I mean, uh, military victory. These are the two ways that conflicts end. And at the moment, what it seems is that Mogadishu is not strong enough, yet it does not want to negotiate with others. And that's, for me, a contradiction. Uh, and, and honestly speaking, even though 
I am largely in, 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 in the view of decentralized unitary politic, decentralized unitary system. Uh, I think what Formaggio, uh, the practice at least that we have seen mm -hmm. in other states is not helping. Okay, in what happened in Baidoa or what happened in other cities are not helping at all. Uh, but that said, when you look at the practice of the regional government as well, or leaders. That Somaliland, have, in Som Puntland. No, well, Somaliland at least wants to succeed. But the others like Buntland, Jubaland, Galmudu, whatever you, they also have been pursuing the practice wise. Secessionist agendas. More or less, not secessionist, but confederal model, which is like they were engaging in so many uh, areas of the, or so many functions uh, out that might belong to the central government. And this is quite and, and here is a very interesting, actually, mm -hmm. uh, uh, dichotomy, okay? Mm -hmm. it, it, is it just that the central government that is trying to create a unitary system? Maybe that's what Formaggi is thinking of, and that is, uh, there's evidence for that. But the other side is not innocent in this case, because they are acting as though they are independent states. Okay. And I think there are so many, I mean, uh, examples that we can give if we have Let's take this conversation forward. Matt, uh, don't, doesn't this look a little bit opaque to you in a way that we're talking about elections in Jobaland, but then there's absolutely no definition about what kind of political establishment you want to have in uh, across the country. So who is to blame? The Somalis themselves, the political uh, uh, leadership or the international community? I, I think in, in this case, the, the blame lies um, very much with the leadership in Mogadishu. Um, as as uh, Afiere said, uh, we, we have a, a federal constitution, um, and, but it's incomplete. And what the constitution, the provisional constitution says, um, which means we essentially have a provisional government, um, is that the powers that are undefined, the powers between the federal uh, leadership and the states, uh, issues like revenue collection and resource, uh, natural resource ownership and management, these are to be negotiated between the federal states and the federal government itself in Mogadishu. Now, the last president set up something called the National Leaders Forum, where he invited the state presidents to the table to start discussions about all of these pending issues that the constitution leaves unresolved. Um, but this president has uh, disbanded the National Leadership Forum. And as Afiere said, um, has not shown any real inclination to negotiation. It seems just to be trying to impose its fiat um, by using third parties like Ethiopia or using uh, donor countries who provide it with money um, to do its bidding. It's a sort of weaponizing of its juridical sovereignty mm -hmm. to dominate the, the federal member states. So I think the real issue here is that either uh, President Farmaggio and his team uh, become the conveners in chief and they bring the leaders together and say, look, let's talk. And we might even talk about going to a federal, uh, a centralized, mm -hmm. uh, decentralized unitary system rather than a federal one, um, if that's what Farmaggio's agenda really is. Um, or Farmaggio will probably leave office in a, in a year, mm -hmm. um, having accomplished virtually nothing uh, except having stalemated the state building process and left Somalia worse than he found it. Jamal, the uh, supporters and loyalists of Madobi see him as the man who has brought stability to Jubaland and defeated the uh, uh, Al-Shabaab. But don't you see this as an exaggeration? Because the Shabaab remain extremely powerful in huge areas across the country. It is true. I mean, they, Al Shabaab control about 54, uh, 70 kilometers outside Kismayo. But in Kismayo and where the Jubaland forces are in control, apart from uh, the attack that happened last month, Kismayo has been very peaceful. Nothing uh, has happened in the past few years except that attack. And as I said, I visited Kismayo uh, this year, and it's a very peaceful city, and it has been very peaceful for several years. And I think. We have to understand from a local Somali perspective, we in the diaspora often talk about policies, mm -hmm. but for the local people, all they care is about peace and stability, but they don't really care who brings that peace and security. And Kismayo is one of those cities that changed hands many times during the civil war, and all the major clans 
of, are vying for control of Kismayi. So it was a test case for Ahmed Madoube. Uh, but he has managed to somehow unite people in Kismayo mm -hmm. and bring peace and security. So in Kismayo, is he's, as far as I have seen, he's very popular with the local people because they might not agree with certain things he does, but at least he brought peace and security. Let's... But it's the central government that is trying to overthrow him and bring someone in his place. Let's talk about the regional implications. Uh, Afiari, Kenya now is staunchly supportive of... Uh, Madobe. However, why are they involved? Is it because they would like to see Jubaland as a buffer zone against Al-Shabaab or is it more to do with the border dispute in the 100,000 kilometers square which is off the coast of the Indian Ocean? Well, Kenya actually wants to use, it has many leverages, among them is so-called the Jubaland uh, as a buffer zone. And when, you, when this maritime dispute came up, one of the uh, leverages that it actually uh, used it was the, so the Jubaland issue. But it's not the only one, I would say. All in all, there are about 500,000 refugees, a large community, business community in Kenya, and uh, of course, other, other leverages that now it enjoys more than Mogadishu. But that uh, also helped Mogadishu in the sense that they played the nationalist card mm -hmm. by saying that, oh, you know what, this is our sovereignty and Kismayo just belongs to uh, part, is part of Somalia. So that has been the case for now. Regionally, though, it's not only Mogadishu versus the Kenya, also Ethiopia is involved here. And this time, strangely enough, that even though Formaggio has been using the, this card for in a successful way, he is using Ethiopia, is not gonna help him okay. uh, in his popularity. And exactly that's why previous president lost the uh, power. And I think uh, he's not very well advised in just- When it comes to this in, issue. When it becomes this issue. Matt, why would the Ethiopian government, which in the past teamed out with the Kenyans, send troops inside uh, Somalia, disagree with the Kenyans and decide to support a new candidate? Why would a country take such a massive gamble that could backfire in Jubaland? Well, I think um, that's very hard to explain. Um, Ethiopia's policy on Somalia has been consistent for the better part of three decades. Um, and this, trip, this 180 degree switch uh, under Prime Minister Abiy seems to be um, more a result of idiosyncratic, highly personalized leadership rather than any kind of strategic policy shift. And I think for Ethiopia, um, as Afiere said, this is, it's really ill-advised. It seems as though uh, anyone in the Ethiopian policy establishment with, with understanding of Somali politics um, has disappeared or been, uh, been replaced because um, Ethiopian troops in Somalia have generally been seen as um, perhaps an un, uh, a benign presence. Um, they've been able to operate with the support of local communities. Have... If you look at what happened when the, uh, the election in Baidoa mm -hmm. was, uh, was essentially hijacked by Mogadishu and the leading candidate was arrested by Ethiopian troops and uh, detained in, in Mogadishu where he remains, um, essentially Ethiopian troops became blind. The community stopped cooperating. I see with your them, point. And they suffered their worst attacks, seven, over 70 of them killed um, ja in, in a decade. Jamal, so this is, I'm, I'm, it's I'm, an inexplicable uh, change of heart. I see your point. Jamal, this is going to be my last question to you, please, in, le in, in less than half of a minute. It's not only the Ethiopians or the Kenyans who are vying for bigger influence. You have also the Saudis, the Emirates, the Qataris, and the, and the Turks. Do you have any concerns that this jostling for bigger political say could create some instability in the area? Yes, there are many foreign actors who are playing uh, politics in Somalia who have different interests, regional governments like Kenya and Ethiopia, uh, and then the Gulf states, and also the Western countries. And I think the longer this goes, the worse for Somalis, yeah. the more actors you would have Thank who you. would arm different groups to fight against, which that's what we have seen in Somalia uh, for many years. But you. I think it can be avoided. It can be avoided. Thank you very much indeed, Jamal.
Osman, Matt, Bryden, Afiari, I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much indeed. And thank you too for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. For further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Hashem, Ahalbaran, the whole team here in Doha. Bye for now.